a little bit our agenda today. Um, I'm going to quickly, actually I, talk, I, it, I thought a lot about what to present today. <laughs> there are lots of topics, so I grabbed automated machine learning uh, for you. I wish I could just talk about some of the projects that we are doing with our clients, but because of the NDA confidentiality, I cannot show <laughs> those projects here. Hope, uh, I hope in you know, other meetups I, I can invite them sometimes and then ask them to present some of their projects for you. But today I'm going to talk quickly talk about um, Azure Machine Learning Service first, um, few uh, maybe like five, 10 minutes introduction about that. And one of the features and cap capabilities of um, Azure Machine Learning Service is automated machine learning that would be our focus of talk today. Um, this is, I think everyone is familiar with this process, easy. Machine learning, there are uh, different uh, stages of that. Preparing your data, building and training machine learning models, deploying your models. And uh, Azure Machine Learning Services are end-to-end -end platform for AI and machine learning uh, uh, process. Uh, it helps you with uh, building and training models in different ways. Automated machine learning is the one that I'm talking today, but uh, uh, there are lots of, um, lots of opportunities, like capabilities that machine learning service provides. Hyperparameter, easy hyperparameter tuning, er early termination policies with hyperparameter tuning, um, different compute options with auto scaling capabilities. Um, we support all the open source frameworks and uh, libraries, all the deep learning um, you know, frameworks that you want to use uh, um, as part of your uh, machine learning uh, project. In terms of uh, operationalization, we provide um, model lifecycle uh, model lifecycle management. You can um, keep track of all your models, versions of your models. Keep track of different experiments that you're doing. Uh, there is integration with DevOps, with Azure DevOps, um, and you can do CI/CD practices with Azure Machine Learning Services as well. Um, in terms of deployment, it, it's easy to deploy models in, in cloud or at IoT Edge. Um, and, and a lot more, <laughs> this is just a list of them. Um, so Azure Machine Learning Services basically is a set of services and some uh, Python SDKs that you, that you can use for building your machine learning and AI projects. Um, for data wrangling, we have a SDK, we call that data prep SDK, that's specifically for, for data wrangling. So that's how it can help with data preparation. Again, for training models, um, hyperparameter tuning and early termination uh, policies uh, is what Azure Machine Learning Service provides. Um, we, uh, we talked about uh, popular deep learning frameworks. Um, I think I, I talk about most of them, but uh, there are um, tons of different capabilities that machine learning uh, service provides. Uh, I'm going to focus on automated machine learning today because I need you know hours and hours just to talk about uh, you know all of these options. But let's just you know focus on automated machine learning mostly. Uh, when we are working with Azure Machine Learning Service um, as an ID that you can work with, you can uh, pick anything that you're more comfortable, anything that support Python. If you are more a developer person, maybe you might want to use, for example, Visual Studio Code. If you are more a data scientist, the data scientists love notebooks, uh, or any, any open source Python IDE, uh, 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 Azure Machine Learning Service supports that. So as an ID, you can use anything that you want. And for compute options, you can train your models locally if your data is, if you don't have big data. But uh, we also have other compute options. If you, um, mostly for Python users, we recommend the uh, ML, Azure Machine Learning Compute. It's a, a cluster of different compute options, a cluster with different nodes, and it does auto scaling for you. You can set number of nodes from minimum zero to whatever number that you want, and it automatically does the auto scaling for you. So whenever um, you're not running any code, you're not training any model, um, uh, the cluster is down, no charge. So uh, that's, a, that's a good option that a lot of clients, they like that. If you're more a Spark user, maybe you can use Azure Machine Learning Service inside the Databricks. So there are different ways, different compute options that you can use um, with Azure Machine Learning Service. Regarding deployment, 
when you train your mo when when you're done with training your models and you you're happy with your model you have accurate model then you want to deploy that uh, in that case the process is you just register your model and then you can create a using a scoring script and your model file you can create a uh, like a Docker image, and then you can deploy that into cloud or at IoT Edge. So that's the deployment process. It's easy. Uh, and with Azure Machine Learning Service, even we made it easier for you. With few lines of code, you can, you can deploy your models. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about automated machine learning. Uh, what is the what is our goal? What is our mission here for for automated machine learning? Uh, we want to basically enable uh, automated building of machine learnings, and the goal here is to democratize AI, to democratize uh, uh, machine learning, uh, and. Um, so in this case, not uh, only data scientists and you know AI developers who are more familiar with the details of uh, you know that word, everyone can build machine learning models. So. Uh, that's, uh, and it helps you to um, accelerate AI and scale AI. Uh, just quickly about how it might be important, think about some target variable, something that you want to predict. It can be a continuous variable, a regression type of problem, or you might, for example, want to uh, do a classification problem and predict different class, different, you know, a categorical variable or something. Uh, what is the process usually? Model creation is typically time consuming, right? You need to pick up some features for your model and then you need to know, okay, what, what is a good model here to use and then you need to set the different parameter and after trying that you might come up with a model with some sort of accuracy but that model is necessarily a, a, like an accurate model that you want to use and you want to do hyperparameter tuning here, sorry. Um, okay, uh, so, and you want to iterate over this process until you come up with an accurate model, right? But this is time consuming. Uh, and in terms of, you know, the, your time, your compute cost, you, you need to spend um, um, some, you know, extra time and cost here to come up with an with a accurate model. Uh, how automated machine learning can help you you can input your data, you just set some easy goals, and those goals are as easy as, okay, what is the type of the problem? Do I have a regression problem? Do I have a classification problem? Is it forecasting? You just need to know what is the type of the problem. And then you can set number of iterations that you want AutumnL try for you, and then you can set a primary metric to optimize, for example, in a classification problem, you might want to optimize based off area under the curve or accuracy. And for regression, for example, you want to minimize your error. So you just need to specify a metric that you want to optimize based on that. And then uh, with you can you can you know there are other parameters that you can set. Even you can say, okay, I want to try some type of models or you want, I want, you might have a blacklist of some type of models that you don't want to consider in this process. There are different um, goals that you can set, but those goals are really easy. You really don't need to have very deep, deep knowledge of uh, machine learning and AI and data science. And then uh, you input your data and AutumnL takes care of uh, basically, oops, takes care of uh, uh, doing the you know data preparation and feature engineering, uh, algorithm selection, and hyperparameter tuning for you, and it gives you uh, like an accurate model based on the goals that you set um, in 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 your in at automated machine learning. That's how automated machine learning can help you. Think about, for example, a sales funnel optimization. Let's say for our clients, we wanna they wanna, for example, buy a Surface Book and they wanna know. Uh, if they want to go with a uh, screen size of 13.5 or 15, for example. That's a classification problem, right? The only thing that you need to know is, okay, that's a classification problem, nothing more, that, more than that. You don't really don't need to know details of the classification models. And then um, assume that this is the data. You might have in your data different types of, you know, numerical variables, categorical variables, um, some text, some um, time-based variables, 
and um, preparing data preparation usually takes um, a lot of our time, right, even before getting into the modeling part. So, for example, for numerical features, you might do normalization. You might want to remove the outliers. Uh, for um, categorical variables, you might want to do some on one hot, one hot you know, encoding. Uh, for um, text features, you have a, like if you have a column there with, with some uh, message in text, uh, you might want to look at the, uh, you know, word frequencies, word and gram mod uh, uh, methods, by gram models, looking at stop words. There are other, um, you might want to do some text analysis here just to prepare that column for yourself. Um, for thinking about time series, uh, let's say you have, um, for example, data coming from sensors, vibration, temperature, you might uh, want to look at the uh, lag features or um, you might want to um, come up with some specific uh, features out of your uh, out of your time variables. For example, what is the day of the week? What is the which month? You know, uh, is it in, in in my data? So this this takes time, right? But uh, with uh, automated machine learning, you you just you really don't need to do anything. You just input your data; it does the job for you. Um, and again, for algorithms, what is a good classification model that I should start with? How should I set the parameters? Those are the things that, uh, that uh, make the uh, training process longer for you. So if we wanna look at the um, capabilities of automated machine learning, uh, right now we support classification, regression, and forecasting scenarios. Um, in terms of compute options, um, I already talked about different compute options that you can use. You can use um, a, a cluster of nodes and you know, assign different jobs to them. You can use uh, even uh, this automated machine learning inside Databricks if you're familiar with that. So there are a couple of different options for, um, for compute option that you can use. In terms of transparency, you can view all the run history, track all the experimentations, and it also uh, gives you some model explainability. It gives you the features that are important in your model. And um, in terms of the experience, you can use that in a notebook, for example. You can use it, there is a UI, even you don't need to, in notebooks you still need to write codes, right? But in, uh, in the UI even, you don't need to write any codes. You can just set all those goals and then click on start and then it trains the model for you. You can use it if you are a BI user. You can use it inside Power BI. So uh, we also added this feature into our Power BI so BI users also can um, build and train machine learning models. Um, and in, uh, also there's an integration with uh, Visual Studio. I, I, I personally haven't used that myself yet, but if you're more uh, like a person with more developer background, that's, that's an option that you can use. So there are different ways that you can use this automated machine learning um, and depends on how you're comfortable with and what's uh, you know, your skills, you can, you, you can uh, pick the one that, uh, that is more uh, uh, useful for you. This automated machine learning, it's based on, it comes from our Microsoft research. So a group of data scientists at, at Microsoft research came up with this um, approach. So uh, there's a science in the background. Um, uh, there is a white paper for that that I just received. I want to read that because I'm, I'm interested in what's, okay, what's happening in the background, how automated machine learning can, can do all of, all of this job for us. And, but uh, as, as far as I know, they're, they're using some collaborative uh, filtering and you know, some optimization methods in the background, but I need to, to read that paper in details. I, can, I, I have that paper in the next slide. If you're interested, you can go and read that paper as well. And then, uh, uh, yeah, and in terms of privacy, okay. Um, that was part of actually my PhD thesis that privacy present, uh, pre uh, preserving um, in healthcare. My project was in healthcare. Um, it's, that's, a, that, that's, that's an issue in uh, healthcare because of the confidentiality. So there is no need to see the data for, for using the automated machine learning. So this is the paper that I was talking about. So if you are interested about uh, what is the real science in the background, uh, just feel free to go and read it. That's in my to-do list. Uh, I'm going to read it for sure. Um, and 
I think I already talked about some of these uh, these things about you know how uh, AutoML can help with data cleaning, with feature engineering, with algorithm selection, tuning, ranking, and explainability. And um, just an example of feature engineering here, um, it helps you whenever there is no variance in your feature, it drops those variables, for example, for you. Or missing value imp uh, imputation, if for categorical variables, it looks at the most common uh, category and replace that with that one. For numer numerical variable, it uses average. Uh, for creating additional features, more applicable for time series and text features for now, but uh, we are adding more and more uh, you know, options and features to, to this. And also transformation and encoding, so it, it does that for you as well. So there are different ways that uh, you can, it, it can help you with feature engineering work. Um, let me quickly show you a demo. This is some of, our, some of the clients that I'm working with, they're using this for different scenarios. One of them, they're using that, this for, um, uh, for predicting power. Uh, it's a utilities company and they could uh, get very, you know, very uh, accurate models uh, based on automated machine learning. Another client that I have, they're using that for cal basically Calgary load uh, prediction. And um, another one, they just started uh, that for a predictive maintenance use case. So my clients are using this in different ways. Um, but, but for the demo, I cannot show <laughs> those works. So it's just a simple example that I have, and I'm going to show you that one. Um, so uh, I already talked about Azure Machine Learning Service, right? This is a workspace in Azure Machine Learning Service. And it has uh, different, we need to create a workspace and then it has different artifacts here from experiments to, you know, compute options, models, images, and deployments. So in experiments part, you can track all the experiments that you're doing. You can log all the uh, different metrics that you have. You can even log different parts. Uh, so it's, it's a way of tracking all the experiments. Uh, in uh, models, when you register a model, when you're happy with the model, you register your model and, and you can keep track of your models. There's a model registry there and it keep track of all the versions of your models. Um, especially when you're working as a team um, and, and machine learning and AI stuff, that is important, right? As um, in, in individually people, you know, save their models with different versions, you know, in your local computer or in some sort of a shared place, but uh, that's not how it works in real world with, with data science teams. Um, let me show you the, here the experiments um, that I just registered today and uh, that's related to our demo. And there are two versions of them. If I register that again with the same name, there will be a version three, but you can also you know, assign different versions numbers to your models as well. And then also for deployment options, you can create different images. And, um, and also if you deploy them, there are a the couple of different options here for test and dev scenarios, we deploy into container instance for production you know, scenarios, we are deploying into Kubernetes cluster, cluster and then um, you can also deploy it, you know, push the models into edge and, uh, and do that. So there are a couple of different options, but let's go to the notebook. This is just a very simple example. We have a sample data here, some um, sensor recordings, and th this last column is our, you know, uh, target variable, and we want to predict the, uh, 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 basically the use case is some sort of a predictive maintenance use case. We want to predict the remaining useful life of a um, specific, uh, I think it's an engine or something. <laughs> I need to read the, um, uh, more about the data, but it's just a sample data. Forget about the data. It's just I just wanted to show you how uh, AutoML can work here. So in order to do AutoML, I, I need just to um, create a, um, a AutoML configuration here, and th those goals that I set that you need to set are basically here. The main ones are, okay, what is the type of the problem, regression, what is the primary metric that I want to set, it's R squared here, number of iterations that I wanna try. Even if you want to 
um, blacklist or whitelist some different models you can uh, you can do that here so it's just um, you just set some easy goals here and when when you submit the job uh, and then you're specifying you know your your um, your data here as well the, you know you can have your uh, X and Y train and validation data and when you submit this it starts uh, basically it starts uh, I think I have five iterations here if I'm correct yes I, I set that as five iterations it starts um, you know training the model for me it tries five different iterations and it picks the algorithms and parameters for myself itself and uh, it takes basically a, I, I should not have run that it takes maybe a few minutes to run but uh, while it is running let me go let me show you the uh, portal and see what would be the uh, uh, the view there so if I go to experiments here in portal and this is the experiments that I was creating at the beginning of the notebook. I just skipped that part. You can you can basically monitor all the runs. As you can see, one is running. This is the one that I'm just running now. The completed ones, the failed ones, duration of different runs. You can even, uh, oh, this one is the one that is running. So let me grab another one. Uh, you can refer to each specific run. Uh, and then it gives you a run ID, it gives you the, uh, the primary metric that you were trying to optimize there, and uh, the, which in this case is R square. And then even if you uh, refer to each of those individual runs, You should be able to su see all the metrics, not not the only the primary one that you were trying to optimize, but even all the other metrics, and then that helps you to make your decision about okay, th is this a good model or not? Do I want to deploy this model or not? And and so on. So uh, it's not really like a black box that you input something, give you something, and then you're not confident uh, confident about what you're using. It gives you detailed information about what model it was used, what, what parameters were used, uh, what what are the you know uh, the all the different metrics in in your uh, in your model. So it gives you um, more um, you know information. It's not like a black box, uh, 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 basically uh, uh, solution. One other thing that is in preview and we just added that. Let's look at the notebook. Okay, we are we are. Then you're running the last one, basically. Um, I want to show you something here, and then I, I'll show you the UI part of this quickly. Anybody, any questions so far? Yes. It, that's, that's why I'm saying it's not a really a black box solution. I'm not as a data scientist confident with inputting something, getting something out of that. I, I want to know what's there, what are the, what is the model, what is the, you know, uh, what features it used, uh, what, what are the parameters. Uh, in that case, even sometimes for, okay, it's done. Uh, sometimes even uh, for when I have some data from my clients, I just want to quickly get some idea even before starting building my own models, to get some idea about what is the predictability, you know, predictability of my data. You don't really have to you just use that always just to build models. You can use that, uh, depends on the user, you can use that, get some idea, see, okay, what is the, uh, what, what accuracy, for example, uh, you know, you, you could get out of your data and then um, you might get more idea for even doing there some customized models uh, for, for your case. So. There are different ways that for a lot of, you know, a lot of people, if they don't have the background, the data science background, that would be, you know, helpful, easy, because uh, they don't need to spend that much time to read about different type of uh, algorithms and see, okay, what they want to use. But even for those who 
know those methods and algorithms. That's how I'm using that in my in my work sometimes to uh, to get more idea. And one other um, scenario that actually we had for one of our clients, they wanted to build a model per each turbine, wind turbine that they have, and they, ha they have thousands of them. So they we started as a proof of concept working on our own models, but then we started automated machine learning. We got the results even a little bit better <laughs> than the models that we deploy. So they're confident. They say, okay, we are going, we are going to use AutoML for, because they, we want to automate that. We want to build thousands of models. We want to, you know, um, assign them to different um, uh, nodes of a computer, you know, a, a, a cluster, and then, and it's okay, it's done. <laughs> Uh, it gives you, you know, good results. So uh, there are different ways that you can think of AutoML, how to use that, but it's not really a black box without giving you any information about what you're doing. Um, this, this is in a, in a notebook, even you can get all those uh, 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 metrics and you know uh, everything that you were, uh, that I showed you in the portal here in the notebook as well. So you really don't need to go to the portal and uh, look at this. Um, you can monitor everything from notebook as well. So that's convenient. You don't need to back and forth, uh, forth you know, uh, refer the portal. Um, and then, and then the UI part. The UI part is in preview. Uh, the, the, the automated machine learning is part of our machine learning service, which is in general availability. It's not in preview. But uh, this UI part is in preview. It's just uh, uh, our team, they just released that. Um, so I just, I don't want to show you how you can create the model. I just want to show you how easy it is just to use it in a few seconds. Um, so if I click on this, it shows all the previous runs that I've done. You can create an experiment here and assign a name there. You can select your compute. I can select any of those compute options that I showed you before. You can also create a new one here if you want. And then I'm losing my voice. <laughs> and then uh, <coughs> uh, it also, uh, with Azure Machine Learning Service, it comes with a, uh, with a storage option for you for your data in cloud. But that's a default store, but you don't have to use that. If you have other different storage options, you can just attach them into your, um, into your workspace. But this is uh, automatically shows my um, my uh, basically default storage that I have. I can just <coughs> uh, select my data. I can just select the task, the target column here, <coughs> and in advanced settings, all the other things that uh, <coughs> I was setting in the configuration part, and then start, boom, and it's done. <laughs> it trains the model for you, and it's using an, a compute target for me from a data in a storage in cloud. So um, that's basically, I guess, all I have <laughs> for now, but questions. In, uh, right now, in I think you can the uh, and same as also the model explainability. If you use the a, the UI and the Power BI, uh, it shows important features <coughs> for you all the features that you use. In the notebooks, it's uh, more you know codes and it uh, it doesn't you know show it, you sh it should be based off uh, you know finding that information, but in uh, Power BI, for example, let me quickly show you. Uh, this is not about the feature engineering part, but this is the same. This is a, when you use automated machine learning in Power BI, it automatically creates a report for you. And that report includes information about top predictors, um, you know, the, your model, uh, you know, accuracy of your model, the parameters that you use in the model. For example, here it shows you, you know, the top predictors here. It doesn't show you if it creates, I'm not sure if it shows you the, uh, the features that it creates. I need to check that. I guess um, it, it just, at the end, if it does some sort of the, the, you know, feature engineering, it should show the, 
it should show that you know the imp when it shows uh, about important features, it should show that one. But uh, uh, it's more in the UI and Power BI part and less in the core part of that. Uh, in the demo that in the demo that I did, there was it's because that was an easy you know uh, time you know some uh, it 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 was not using any time series or some sort of a word or something that shows you because that was an easy example. Uh, but if if you have you know those type of variables, uh, it you don't need to change them. You can you know it it handles that for you. I just need to sh make sure if at the end it gives you the new features or not. Uh, honestly, I'm not 100% sure about that one. Uh, but um, yes, 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 you don't need to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it doesn't do all the possible feature engineering in the world, at least the ones that I just listed there. For example, for extracting, you know, um, time variables or uh, for the text part, or the, yeah, th it does that. But not, but our product team are just adding more and more features to that. I just need to uh, again, that that was actually a good question because I just need to check if in the report it shows the, those new features or not. I haven't just seen that myself, so I, I'll check that. But uh, this is the important feature. If you go to training detail. And this, re basically this report is automatically generated. I didn't do anything. In Power BI, I just quickly, uh, basically just uh, grab my you know features and the type of the model, and then I train the model, and then it automatically creates that for me. And this is, for example, it, it was using in this example a GPM model. These are the uh, exact parameter values that, uh, that it was using. Um, and uh, and these are actually the data visualization, okay. Um, because in notebooks usually you, you won't see this, it's more in UI and then in the Power BI part. Uh, but uh, yeah, it gives you also, let me see what else it gives you. Uh, if you go to accuracy reports, it also gives you a RC curve, depends on the type of the model that you're using. If it's a classification one, for example, it gives you, it shows you the ROC curve from visualizations for you, sensitivity, accuracy, and so on. So, yeah. Ensemble models, yeah, that's one of the models that we have. Actually, I think we had that in, uh, in the notebook, I guess, yeah. You can see that was the one that was used. There is a list of algorithms. F right now it supports scikit-learn models, uh, but our product team are working on deep learning models as well. Deep learning is not there yet, uh, but they're working on that. Right now it's more scikit-learn, and um, you can, again, you can blacklist or whitelist algorithms if for any reason you want to avoid some of them or you want to consider some of them uh, in, in your runs. Question? Yeah. I'm not, I don't think so for now. No, there are, I, as far as I know, there is a list of, for, you know, 45, 50 different algorithms for now. But again, you know, we are adding more and more to that. Uh, so maybe <laughs> in future, yeah. 